hope that everybody's safe. I made this talk a little bit, uh, it, it's a brand new talk, I never presented anywhere else, and um, I made this slightly, slightly shorter than normal because I have two demos, and you know how demos, uh, online demos work, live demos work. And yeah, but hopefully if everything is okay, uh, I can give you guys some, some time back. So for those who never heard about me before, uh, I'm Dennis Rosa. I work, uh, I have been working for, with software development, development for more than 15 years. I am a NoSQL and Java specialist. I try to contribute to a lot of uh, open source uh, projects. So Spring and uh, others, mostly Java related because I'm a Java guy. And I also work as a developer advocated Couchbase. Uh, today, I would like to start by talking uh, about two uh, stories, uh, two projects that I worked on in the past. Uh, <clears throat> the first one was uh, before I joined Couchbase, I was, work I was working on my own startup. And in this startup, I was building a facilities management software. And during this requirement phase, I naturally, I talked to a lot of potential clients and tried to understand the requirements. And one thing that I noticed all the time was uh, they always mentioned, okay, the app should work offline. And I was like, oh yeah, that's totally makes sense because um, those people working in, with facilities in general, they uh, quite often have to work on underground floors. So that makes sense that the app should work offline. But it, there, there are a bunch of uh, facilities management tools out there. And it was, for me, it was kind of strange why they didn't have uh, offline applications yet. And then when I finally sat on my desk, and I was like, okay, how can I build this offline uh, app? Uh, then I actually understood that this would be a huge pain in the neck because when I, in my offline app, or uh, I have to store like the whole equipment list and with equipment, I ha there's a bunch of other related data with a lot of uh, specifications, parameters, uh, metrics, they are tracking all the stuff. I also have to store like the floor layout of the building, uh, the whole maintenance uh, maintenance history of the equipment, and also the maintenance plan. So if I I'm doing some maintenance on on, the, on an equipment, and two weeks from now I have to come back here again. So potentially I can already do this maintenance right now. There is also some worker order, user data, and all this, all this stuff. And I realized, okay, that's, that's why a lot of the companies that already have facilities management tools, they don't have uh, um, like a very good uh, offline app yet because this is rather complex to build. Uh, Another use case that I also have here is, uh, this is rather new. Uh, I'm working on this open source uh, tool for events. So it is essentially for people working with marketing or developer relations where I work, uh, it is important to have some, uh, track the events that you are speaking or you are sponsoring. And then you also have this concept of private and public events or so private, so Couchbase for instance, have this uh, NoSQL summits, which are events that you can go there for a whole day and learn about NoSQL. Uh, and there are also like public events like GoTo where you can just buy a ticket and attend the conference. And I would like to uh, first have something better than a spreadsheet for us to go through all the statistics of the events that we organized and also be able to have a, a, a database of all the conference happening in the world. So we can, um, in the beginning of the year or, or in the middle of the year, we can plan which are the conference we would like to sponsor and also keep a little, some track, some, some data about this, this conference to understand what are the conference we, we sponsored in the past, uh, was, it, was it a good conference or not? So 
that's exactly uh, the two that, uh, that's actually one of the projects I'm working on. And this was totally designed to be a, a software as a service product. And the key thing here is to have like a, a collaborative database of events. So every single new company can join this and, and contribute to, to and add new conferences because it's not that easy to get this data. Uh, so people have to insert this manually, but uh, if multiple companies are using the software, they all can coll collaborate in, in, and create this global database of events. So I talked to a lot of uh, companies as well before working on this. And when I finally have the first version, I presented to some important ones because they, they are the ones that will contribute the most for uh, improving this database. And one thing that I heard was, okay, that's super cool, but we don't want to have, uh, do, we don't want others to have access to our private events. And, and I, I told them, yeah, that's, that's fine. Uh, the private events only you can see. And the guy told me, no, you didn't understand. We, we don't want even you to have access to those private events. We don't want this to, to be hosted somewhere else. We want to host this, the software ourselves. And I'm like, okay, yeah, shoot. Like, this is not how the tool was designed for. So, and then I, I was trying to understand, okay, how can I solve this issue now? Uh, one of the options, of course, was to, okay, yes, you can run the, the, the application yourself, but uh, it kind of diffused uh, the whole uh, goal of the project because it was designed to be a collaborative tool for us to create, uh, for all the companies create this global database of events. So yeah, this is possible, but not ideal. We will lose a lot of development of the tool itself. Uh, we, I also thought about, okay, what if we synchronize databases? So Couchbase, ha, for instance, have something called uh, cross data center replication, where I can replicate parts of the database to another uh, cluster. But one, it, it's kind of problematic because I have to give a uh, username and password for them to synchronize with, the, with their database. It's also, yeah, a little bit strange to, to ask some other people to uh, connect with my database. And so it's not scalable because if I have 200, 300, 400 companies using it, I can't ask for them to, hey, uh, connect to my database and let's synchronize this uh, data centers. And also there's a bunch of security and features that I can't uh, implement with this kind of tool. Uh, <coughs> I could also re-implement re the whole software to uh, have like store, uh, store private events locally and and public events remotely. But this will put a lot of pressure on, on me because, hey, I have to re-implement uh, re a lot of the software. And this will also limit some of the features that I would like to implement, especially reports, because then I, uh, when you want to extract some reports, which is essentially one of the goals of, of the project, uh, bring some metrics uh, from events and from a conference and all the stuff. Uh, this will limit uh, the reports that I can generate because, hey, the data is not in the server there. So I, I need to make a REST call and get some data there and then join this data. So it would not be a, a good solution. Although it is, um, I, I, it will require a lot of effort to make this work. So one of the the common thing between those cases here is that in both cases, we need some sort of smart data synchronization. I am a little bit against this word as this smart word because uh, sometimes sounds like a chip marketing in general, but it is, it is a different kind of synchronization because uh, hey, I, I, there is no guarantee that the data, like if they are running, um, uh, a standalone version of my software, there's no guarantee that they will be online when I send the data. Um, I also would like to filter some of the, the data that's being synchronized and, and all those kind of things. So it, it is not, um, um, I, I can of course implement this by myself, but it will take a lot of time. And when we saw, and 
if you think about it, this is just, I, I personally have those two experiences, but this is something very common. So uh, you can think about a number of use, use cases that would also have the, the, face the same issues. Um, in, in our case here, we have clients that uh, work with IoT, so they have uh, medical devices that are monitoring uh, the patient's uh, health and then sending data to the back end. Uh, we have other cases where people are working in the field and they need to uh, sync data about the equipment or about the, their work. Um, another use case that I heard last year was uh, the Brazilian census. Uh, so like 300,000 people going uh, visiting every single house in Brazil and getting data about people and then synchronizing this back to the server. So there's a bunch of uh, scenarios that we can think of, of um, things that we should use cases where we can store data locally and then synchronize with the server. Especially games, for instance, now is also a, a very common scenario. And the problem with data synchronization is that, okay, <coughs> sorry, it seems easy at first, but there is a lot of complex, uh, complexity under the hood. Uh, and essentially that's exactly what Sync Gateway, uh, the main topic of this talk, that's exactly what um, Sync Gateway is uh, focused on. So Sync Gateway is essentially a middleware that connects Couchbase Lite with Couchbase um, server. I, I will talk about those two in a minute. But SQL Gateway is a very simple uh, and and a very simple and light middleware that allows you to do some uh, have a lot of control on the data that is being synchronized. It is super elastic and and of course open source. Uh, Sync Gateway sits uh, between Couchbase Lite and Couchbase Server. Uh, you cannot use Sync uh, cannot use Sync Gateway with other databases. Uh, it is specifically designed to work with Couchbase Lite and Couchbase Server. However, uh, all those three comp components here they are free and open source. On my startup, uh, by the way, I was using uh, the community version of all those three uh, uh, softwares here. <coughs> so, <clears throat> essentially, uh, Couchbase. Uh, for those who never heard about Couchbase in, uh, before, Couchbase is uh, a NoSQL database, fairly similar to MongoDB, I would say, but designed to be highly scalable. So I would say the key thing in Couchbase is uh, performance at scale. So you can literally scale to hundreds of nodes in the same cluster. Um, it, it is not a, a not a, a new database. It's been there for eight years already, but most of the companies using Couchbase, they are have more critical scenarios. So we are talking about companies like eBay, PayPal, LinkedIn, and the company that has a, a fruit as a logo, but I, I can't say the name. But those are all like scenarios where they have literally clusters running Couchbase with 100 nodes. Uh, it, it, it's kind of impressive to think that, okay, yes, uh, you, you can, have one single database with 100 nodes and still be strong consistent and also support uh, transactions. And Couchbase Lite is, is essentially a NoSQL database, a embedded NoSQL database. So you can de uh, deploy, use this database on your mobile application or on your IoT device. It's a super, uh, a super small database. So we have, um, very small footprint in general. And it kind of sounds crazy at first to have like a NoSQL database in, a, in, the, in the edge or in the mobile device or IoT. But in fact, um, Couchbase Lite, <coughs> sorry, Couchbase Lite is not that different than other uh, popular uh, mobile databases. Uh, the main difference between uh, those SQLite, uh, SQLite, the main difference between SQLite and Couchbase uh, Lite, for instance, is that on SQL, uh, on SQLite, you 
you still deal with this tables and rows, right? So if I have a user and I, the user has a preference, have a telephone numbers, I have to create different tables for them to store all this data, which, okay, that's how we are used to do this kind of stuff. And with Couchbase Lite, for instance, we store the data as, as JSON. So when you have your user with preference, with uh, telephone numbers, the, or rows, the, we, we just directly translate your entity structure to JSON. Uh, that's, that's essentially what, uh, and because this is not a relational model, we give this name as, uh, we call this NoSQL, but the, the main difference here is just the way we store data. It's a little bit different. And of course, uh, <coughs> even though we, we store data as JSON, you can still query the data pretty much like you would do in a relational world. The only difference here is, yes, we have some extra keywords to help you navigate through the whole structure. So you, you can still do joins, you can still do group lines, average, all the sort of stuff that you're used to. But there is some, some, <coughs> some extension to the SQL language to allow you to uh, make more complex queries. So for instance, here I have a hotel and a list of uh, all the people who liked uh, this hotel. And I want to select, okay, what are the, the um, here in the expression property, I say public like zero. So I want to select the first person that's uh, like this hotel when uh, and may uh, have like this, this hotel as well. So I, I can essentially go to uh, arrays or nested entities and navigate to them and get just what you need. I can also update just what you need. I don't need to update the whole document. <coughs> so the main difference here is, hey, we store data as JSON and we have a, a, more, um, a, a more powerful query language that allows you to navigate the whole structure and select just what you need. Uh, apart from that, uh, Couchbase Lite has this layer where you can uh, connect with Sync Gateway and then get replic uh, replicate all the changes that you have made in the mobile app and also replicate, uh, uh, receive all the data that have changed in, in, in the backend. So <clears throat> that's pretty much it, the main difference. In fact, uh, Couchbase Lite under the hood even use SQL Server as a, I mean, sorry, SQL Lite as a, a storage engine. So that's pretty much uh, what Couchbase uh, Lite is about. It's just, okay, now we allow you to store JSON and then we have this replication layer that allows you to synchronize with, uh, with Couchbase server. Next slide. Oops, let's just see here. So now that I talked about uh, all the components, I can explain a little bit about um, how this actually works. Um, so ideally when you have, when you need this kind of synchronization, we would have like Couchbase Server, Sync Gateway and Couchbase Lite. This is a true uh, event driven system. So I can do things like uh, live queries. So if in your mobile application, let's say you are listing a, a product and then suddenly one of the products is uh, out of stock. When you receive this, up, this document update that, okay, this document has been changed, uh, you can get notified and then uh, re-render the, re -run the query and update the interface. So you can have a live, a live view of what's the current state of the database. There's uh, some other stuff as well that you can do. So even though I have uh, subscribed uh, to listen to some changes in the database. <coughs> I can still decide if I want to store this or not in my uh, local database, because of course uh, I can't replicate uh, the whole database in a mobile. So I can one subscribe to just parts uh, of this database. And even though I have subscribed to those um, document types or, or those streams, I can still decide if I want to store this locally or not. 
So you can listen to those changes and decide what you want to do with it. <coughs> Naturally, uh, Sync Gateway allow, allows you to have uh, offline, is offline capable. So you can store, your application will essentially always query everything locally and store everything locally. And the Sync Gateway will be responsible for uh, sending this data back to Couchbase uh, server to the uh, backend database. And whenever some change changes in the, in the backend uh, application, Syncator is responsible to change, to send this change back to, to the mobile. So uh, in theory, the mobile doesn't even know that uh, there is a Couchbase server out there. It's always storing everything locally and, and, and querying everything locally. Of course, you can still make REST calls to your backend application, that's totally fine. But if you, are, if you want to implement something that is uh, offline capable, you probably should uh, rely just on the, the data do, that you are storing locally. <coughs> uh, just some important things here. So uh, when, when your application have connect, have, has connectivity, we use uh, WebSockets to synchronize everything. And usually this is quite fast. So when you change something, something in the backend, uh, in a matter of seconds, you already have, you can view this change in the mobile. And then when you don't have, uh, don't have connectivity, uh, we use some exponential back off to say, hey, yes, uh, do I have connectivity now? Do I have connectivity now? So we take care of that, uh, of um, checking if, uh, the device has connectivity and then synchronize the database. <coughs> and then uh, you can use uh, silent notifications and some other strategies to also make sure that your app uh, is synchronized uh, even when the user is not using your app at all. Uh, one another important thing here is Syncator can also, uh, you can also use web webhooks in the gateway. So this is exactly what I was doing, doing with this uh, event sprint app, this, this event man management app. So you can subscribe to, uh, you can configure Sync gateway to say, hey, whenever a document change, please call this uh, URL here and then send the changes to this URL. So you can connect with, uh, you don't need to connect this with the uh, Couchbase Lite, you can even uh, extend this and, and create other listeners to uh, Sync Gateway. <coughs> and this is really powerful, for instance, if you want to uh, do exactly what I described before. So something important changed and you need to notify the user that, uh, uh, that, that the user app that uh, they need to connect and update some stuff. So you can call an URL that send uh, uh, a notification to the user for to open the app, for instance, or you can even create your own uh, consumer for uh, the changes in the sync gateway. <coughs> uh, there's a, another important thing here as well, so conflict uh, conflict handling. So it is uh, sometimes a little bit problematic if you change the data in a mobile, in a, and at the same time the data is changed in the server. Uh, <coughs> there's a, a whole theory about how revisions, uh, the revision tree works, but I'm not getting into that right now. Uh, the main thing here, which is really important, is that on the mobile, you can decide how you want to solve this conflict. So you can say, okay, I don't care uh, the local wins or the remote uh, always uh, wins, or I can even mer merge uh, it merge those two documents. So you can get notified when there is a conflict, you can show some notification to the user and say, hey, guess what? There, uh, there is some, some problem with this document here. How do you want to proceed? Or yourself, you can uh, programmatically, uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, merge, uh, solve this conflict. So there is a bunch of classes that help you with that. But this is something that is already uh, uh, built in, in the database and is part of the SDK, uh, how you can manage those conflicts when uh, something changed in, in a server or even in, a, in another mobile phone and at the same time in, in your mobile device as well. And then you need to solve this conflict. Uh, 
you can also uh, handle data rotting in general. So let's say you only want the mobile to read data from the, the, the main Couchbase server, or you just want the mobile to write data, or you can choose the direction of the synchronization. You, you can also say, hey, um, uh, the synchronization should be a one time only. So just when the user install the app, you will download all this data from the server and then uh, it will, ne will never synchronize again. Or you can say, no, no, this synchronization is actually uh, continuous. So you have all this, uh, you have a lot of flexibility to decide how you want to, um, to route the data. There is even so, some more complex thing that you can do. So for instance, you implement, implement some, some validations uh, this is uh, the, you can code this uh, in, inside the Stingator configuration. You can code the behavior you want. So you can use JavaScript for that. And then can even uh, do something like, okay, yes, you, this user can only change this document if he has some specific role or he, he can only delete this document if he, he have like an editor role or he can change this document, so you, you, you can, I just made up those, those rules, but you can create the rules yourself and make, and make all those, those validations. Even for instance, you can say, oh yeah, uh, you, you can't uh, change this document because there are some missing uh, attributes here. So you can always, uh, the, the SIG gateway allows you to do some sanity check before merging this document to the database. Uh, there is some other strategies that I like to do as well. They're like to, to talk uh, in the security uh, part of this talk. So you, in security, Syngator also allow you to um, manage the authentication and authorization of the users. Uh, the users can subscribe to channels. So channels are um, essentially streams of data. So you, you can decide how these channels will look like. Uh, I could have like a public uh, channel where, okay, not even the, you, uh, you don't even need to be authenticated to subscribe to this channel. Or no, I do really, to, I do really need to be uh, authenticated to this channel, but everybody can subscribe. Or for instance, just someone with this specific role can subscribe to the channel. So it's really flexible on how you want to create those streams. And for instance, let's say I have uh, a user and I, want, I, I just want to subscribe to changes, of, uh, to changes on my user. So I can subscribe to my user channel and then all the data uh, related to my user will be streamed to this uh, channel and then I can subscribe to that. And I usually prefer as well to uh, instead of, in some cases, instead of uh, replicating some of the logic on Sync Gateway, I prefer to use the comment pattern. So when I want to change something, I store a document locally, say, uh, with a comment, say, let's say, um, a request order. And then uh, if this is a uh, e-commerce app, right? And then this document will be processed and synchronized with the backend server. And the backend server, we have a job or we have a listener that will listen to a new document called uh, common, uh, new request or new, new uh, order. And we'll execute this order in the backend. So you, you, there is different strategies that you can use to ensure security. One of them is to, to have as well your, uh, all your rules on Sync Gateway. Uh, we're almost on the demo part. So just to talk a little bit about the Syncator configuration, there's literally not a lot that you, uh, it's pretty much work uh, almost out of the box. Other, other things I did here in this first use case is I just uh, specified the, the URL of my database, the bucket name, which is a schema, the username and password, of course, and then here in the users, I'm specifying the user that my mobile app will use to connect to Sync Gateway. So there is two, those two, two different things. On Sync Gateway, how to connect Sync Gateway with the database and 
you can also create uh, those users uh, on Sync Gateway that allow you your mobile app to connect to Sync Gateway. And of course, you can add user dy dynamically. We have a lot of REST endpoints that allow you to do that. Uh, and then <coughs> on your mobile app, the only thing you, you, you need to do is to, apart from connecting to Couchbase Lite, of course, is to create this replication configuration where you specify the URL, the sync gateway, and the username and password, and which channels you want to subscribe. That's pretty much it. And yeah, and then you can listen to all the changes, all the, the stuff that I have mentioned in the past. And in my application, if I want to, let's say, I, uh, this is a real uh, piece of code of mine. Uh, let's say I have equipment here. This is uh, the resources kind of equipment. If I want to put this uh, uh, document in a channel, uh, one of the things that you do is just have an attribute saying, hey, those are the channels that this document sh should, uh, should, subscribe, should be added to. And then that's, uh, and then on my mobile app, I would just subscribe to the same channels and I will receive any changes of this document. Okay, so now I would like to show you my first demo. Uh, you can pray to the demo gods now because I have, I'm doing something mad here. So I have here, uh, this is a app that allows you to uh, do synchronizing drawing. So I have my first app here running, uh, this is a uh, summary and I'm running an emulator. And now I will start my second uh, emulator here. And hopefully if my, ma my machine has enough memory, you will see a second, yeah, a second emulator here. So, What's happening here is I wrote a very simple app that whenever I draw something here, uh, it saves this drawing as a document in, locally in the database. But uh, because I haven't started Sync Gateway yet, so I have Sync Gateway here. Uh, I don't spend a lot of time on configuration, but there's nothing super special here. I am connecting uh, this app uh, to uh, Couchbase to Couchbase here. So I have this bucket on um, Couchbase called CouchDraw. I have Sync Gateway connected to this database here. Uh, Sync Gateway is this uh, application here. And then I have my two mobile apps uh, connected to uh, Sync Gateway. So when I come here and say, okay, let's draw something here, hopefully, or it should, appear on this app. Nope. Okay, let's try to restart everything here. So let's start Syncator again. I left one of the demos running because I was a little bit scared of taking too long to start. Okay, so now I think that was some issue with the emulator. So now if I draw this here, you see that, okay, this will draw the same, the same, uh, this, the same um, lines in, in both applications. So let's say here, I can clear everything. Uh, this should be clear as well. So when I draw something here, it should at some point appear here. Yeah, this is, uh, some probably con the connectivity. So that's pretty much, uh, there, there's nothing really special with this application here. The main thing is uh, there is a problem with the uh, screen size as well. That's why some of the stuff is not up here. here. But uh, the main thing here is uh, there's nothing special with this app. What's happening here is this app is storing this data locally and then Sync Gateway is automatically synchronizing uh, this data with this other application. So that's how you can do uh, uh, an application that automatically synchronize databases. So each, each line of this is a new document. Uh, you don't need to, uh, this whole document, this whole example is, let me stop here. This whole example is already doc well documented in this 
app here. So if you just search for Couch Draw, you can see uh, how to run this whole demo. I actually worked this demo in the past. It's been a while since I have done this, but well, running two, uh, two instances of this is too much for my 2015 Mac. Uh, the second demo is a little bit more interesting here. So here I want to, I'm running um, a local, uh, I have a, a remote application, a Python uh, backend application, Sync Gateway, and a local uh, Java application. So I'm literally running a, ja a, a Java Swing application here. Uh, and this is just uh, a real example of how to use um, like couch, uh, Sync Gateway and, and Couchbase Lite for 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 booking um, travels, for instance. And the fun thing is, this is actually a really uh, a real use case because uh, the um, where is my okay my machine completely freezed. So the company responsible for 85% uh, of the flight bookings in the world, they are actually using Couchbase for that. And a lot of uh, flight companies also use Couchbase for the mobile app. Um, I think Ryanair is one of the famous ones. So I have a, a simple backend application here. I'm not gonna go through the, the whole code, but essentially I can go here to localhost 880. And this is a very simple app. I can just create a new user here called, let's say, John. John and register. Oops. Uh, test. Test. What's happening? Uh, let's start in Gateway for this app and then run the app here. Okay, now it's running. And then let's say this thing and login. Okay, so I have my uh, Python, I see simple backend, simple uh, Python backend here. And then I can come to I just queue Visual Studio here because it's taking too much memory. Uh, I have a simple um, Java Swing application here, nothing really super special. Uh, I can run this app here as well. And now I have uh, the backend application running, the sync gateway for this application running, and then the Java app soon. Just a second. Yep, so here it is. Uh, I can log into with the name, uh, user with the same username and password. Let's uh, remove that so I don't care about this thing. <coughs> and one thing we, we are doing here is this application has its uh, it has a, its own embedded database, so it's using Couchbase Lite, and the backend application here is also is using Couchbase. So what we can do is to come here and say, okay, let's uh, book a flight here. Uh, we can say from San Francisco, oops, San Francisco uh, International. Today and to San Diego International. And then you come back tomorrow. So I can search for these flights. And then I can add the flights to my basket. And then I go to my basket and then I can buy uh, those, uh, those two flights. What will happen here now is, one, I'm using here the, this live query. So when there is a new, ch a new document chain, it will rerun the query and automatically update the, the interface. So I can do something like buy here and buy here. 
and then it will automatically appear here. I already had some other uh, documents there that's why it appear here, but uh, this is exactly what, what is happening. And then I can pretty much do the same. So if I, I have the, all the hotels booked here, uh, if I come back here and say, let's say remove those flights, And of course, all the data about the, the hotels and flights are uh, local as well. So if, even if I kill Sync Gateway and I don't have any connectivity, I can still um, book those flights. And then once the connectivity is back, it will uh, automatically uh, update the, the synchronize with the server. So let's let log, log in again. So I still, it has, hasn't, uh, synchronized it yet. Yep. But I can come here and say, okay, let's flights. I can do the same. So San Francisco, you guys, San Francisco International to San Diego International. Um, in fact, let's try with a new user here. So let's log in here and try um, Smith, Smith, and then register. Okay. And in app, I can log out, log, log in with a new user, Smith, Smith. And then I can search for flights. So Sun, uh, Francisco International to San Diego. So yeah, that doesn't matter the date. So we can say today and tomorrow and then search, uh, by those two ones. And then when, if I refresh the application, and logging with the same user again. And the booked, I can see those, those two flights. And that's exactly what's happening here. So if we come back to the app, uh, you will see that here in the DB model, uh, DB manager, we have this, oops, my machine is super slow right now. Uh, just, uh, I'm about to finish. So this, uh, nothing super special in this application. So essentially uh, here in the open user DB, I am creating, uh, I'm, I open the database, I create some indexes because yes, you can also create some indexes to uh, in your local, in your embed, embedded database. And I start the replication. And then when I go to the replication manager, I'm here in the replication manager and saying, hey, I want to synchronize just those uh, type of uh, documents here. So I'm synchronizing with my local database, uh, only the airline, the airport, the route and the landmark. So that's pretty much that's how it works. Um, the example is also super well documented. So it took me just a few uh, minutes to, to set it up if you already have Couchbase installed. Uh, yeah, that's a little bit of what I have. Um, Couchbase, it, it, definitely check out couchbase.com. I have all the links here of the two demos so that, that you can run by yourself. This, uh, although my machine kind of froze with uh, Visual Studio, um, this is a super well tested, have been used in a lot of critical use cases. Uh, the mobile gaming interest industry is a heavy user of Couchbase Lite and Couchbase Mobile uh, because that's exactly one of the best scenarios where, okay, I need to save my, my stats or the, my items locally when I ha don't have connectivity. And once I have connectivity, the, the game synchronize with the backend server. So that's um, 
pretty much what I'd like to show you guys today. Thank you very much. <laughs>